Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from LearnColorGrading.com. I just downloaded uh, the new Premiere 2015 edition. It comes with a lot of new features. However, the coloring features are what interest me the most. So the first change here is that on top, we have new uh, buttons here for the new workspaces. These are the same workspaces we had before. We just have a shortcut now that gets it to these spaces. We can edit them, of course. So we have assembly, editing, color, effects, and audio. So the first thing we noticed that we have a dedicated coloring panel. Now we had this before, but the fact that uh, they have it here in the middle means that Premiere is moving more towards adding more coloring features. The first thing you'll notice here is that we have new scopes. These are the same scopes uh, in speed grade. They're just being moved here. We're not going to be discussing scopes now. We're going to be discussing the Lumetri color panel, the new panel that was added. Simply when I click on any piece of footage here, I will get this color panel to the right. If we come to the effect controls, notice that there is no Lumetri color panel effect here. However, if I move any of the controls, all of a sudden I have a new effect added automatically, which will be the Lumetri color panel. This is important if we want to uh, add uh, masks or reset the effect. So let's come back to the scopes here. Now the Lumetri color panel is divided into these sections. First we have the basic correction, then the creative part. If I click here, now the basic correction is collapsed and we just expanded the uh, creative part here. Then you have curves color wheels, and vignette. Notice that next to every section, we have a controller here to enable or disable this entire section. So if I go to the basic corrections and I change anything, and I uncheck this control here. Now we've just disabled this entire section. Notice that the image is passing through these sections from top to bottom. So the raw image is going first to the uh, basic section, then creative, curves, color wheel, and vignette. So the basic correction will be the first effect to affect this image, and the vignette will be the last one. Now, before we go ahead, you have to notice that we have two different controllers here. They might look the same, but they're different. If I click on the master controller here and I change anything, I am not changing this file in the timeline. I'm changing the original file that I have in the entire project. So if I'm on the master section here and I change the temperature, I've just changed the temperature of the original file. Notice even the thumbnail here changed. Now, if I take this new file and put it in any other sequence, these will be the new colors of this file. Let me reset everything. Now, however, if I go to the uh, test part here, of course, this sequence is called test, so this is the name of the sequence. Now, if I click on this clip in the sequence and I change anything, I'm only changing this instance of the clip without affecting the original film. So if I take the original film and I add it to any other sequence, it retains its original colors. Let me reset this. I'm going to go to effect controls and just reset the Lumetri effect. Now, let's start explaining all the sections. First, you have an input LUT. When you come to the basic section, the first controller you have is an input LUT. This is the first LUT to affect your footage before any of the other controls. And you have some LUTs here provided by Adobe. And you can simply hit browse for other LUTs. So now you can browse to any LUT and just import it. Let's go back to none. Then you have the temperature and tint controls. If you're using Premiere, these are new controls that used to be available through uh, color wheels, but this is the first time they're presented this way. Now to understand what they're doing, we have to come to scopes here, and I'm just gonna keep the RGB parade. The first thing to understand is that these controls here, the white balance controls, temperature and tint, they affect the highlights of the image. Because if you want to change the uh, feel of an image, you start by changing the highlights first. Now, if I control the temperature slider, notice that all what I'm doing is I'm controlling the balance between the uh, red and blue channels. Now, let's reset. And if I go to the tint control, I'm balancing the green channel with the other channels, starting from the highlights. Notice that I'm not uh, controlling the shadows. Let me reset. The temperature slider is one of the most important sliders because one of the first decisions you have to make when you start color grading any footage is basically, are you looking for a cool or a warm look? And this slider will give you control over this very important decision early on. So I can simply take a look at the image if it's warm or cool and decide what kind of look I want for this image. Then after the white balance controls, we come to the tone controls. First we have exposure. Then contrast. Then we have a bunch of very interesting controls. We have 
highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. You might be asking what's the difference between highlights and whites and shadows and blacks. First of all, this is a very nice feature to be added to uh, Premiere because one of the main things Premiere used to struggle with was highlight recovery. Because sometimes you want to add more contrast. Now notice, look at this image. Now I'm just going to add more contrast. And quickly I'm going to be losing details in the highlights. However, now I have a highlights control and whites control. So simply I can just bring the whites down and bring the highlights down. And now I've just recovered the highlights in the image while retaining my contrast adjustment. Let me reset and let's take a look at this part of the image here. Now I'm just going to bring the highlights down and notice what's happening. This part of the image is coming down while the extreme highlights, the whites as they call them, are still in place. Now notice what will happen when I bring the whites down. Now I'm bringing the entire highlights down. Let's repeat this. So when I bring the highlights down, it will try to bring the highlights while retaining the extreme highlights, the really white parts of the image, trying to keep them in place in order to uh, preserve the highlight uh, roll off of the image. However, if I brought the highlights down and I still feel that I need to bring the extreme highlights, the really white areas down, I can simply use the white controls and just bring it down. And the same goes for shadows and blacks. I'll just come to this image because it has more shadows. Now let's notice what happens when I bring the shadows up. Notice I'm bringing the shadows up, but still Premiere is trying to retain the really black parts of the image to keep them where they were exactly. Now, I can simply just bring this controller up to bring even more of the black parts up. Of course, this gives us very nice controls over our image. We can add a lot of contrast in the image while still retaining some information in the black areas, for example. So I can simply bring the black parts down while getting the shadows up. And now I have a very nice transition happening in the dark areas of the image. Then I have the reset and auto buttons. Of course, auto is for auto color. Uh, it rarely works, but we have it. And then we have the saturation control. Let's go to the creative part. The creative part also starts with a LUT. This is the second LUT you can add. So in the Lumetri color panel, you can actually add two LUTs. A LUT for correction. So for example, if you're shooting a uh, log, you can add a LUT to correct your footage from log to Rec. 709. And then you can add another creative LUT to give a certain look to your image. And that's even designed by Adobe. I mean, look here, if you come to the, I'm just back to the basic section here. Look at the LUTs here. They're all color correction LUTs. So you have S-Log 2, S-Log 3, uh, Canon. Th these are camera patches. If you come to the creative part, you have different types of LUTs. You have gold rush, you have gold tobacco. You have, you know, like styles rather than uh, camera patches. And we have a very nice feature added by Adobe. You can simply browse different LUTs by clicking on these arrows here. And you have a small preview window here. So if I like this LUT, now I'm just previewing it, but it's not added yet. I have to simply click on the preview here, and now the LUT is added. And notice that the creative part is being added after the basic correction. So now if my image doesn't look good, I can simply go back to the basic correction and adjust my shadows and my exposure and saturation until I have a better image. Let's come back to the creative part. So first we had our LUT section, then we have our LUT intensity. So if I drag the intensity down, now I have no LUT added to my image. And if I increase it to 100%, I'm increasing how powerful the LUT is and how intense the effect is on my image. I'm going to reset everything. Then we have the adjustments section. First, we have faded film. Faded film simply cuts the shadows and highlights to emulate the look of a faded film. So it just basically gives you less dynamic range. Let's bring it down. Then you have sharpen. Then you have vibrance and saturation. Let's come to this image here to understand the difference between vibrance and saturation. They're both basically saturation controls. Saturation controls the saturation in the entire image. So I can simply just drag it to the right or to the left. Vibrance controls the saturation in the areas that are less saturated. So if I increase vibrance, I'm increasing saturation in the areas that are not well saturated in the image, which are usually the highlights and shadows. Now, take a look at her uh, dress here, and I'm just going to bring the vibrance control down and the saturation up. 
I just increase the saturation of the entire image. But if I bring the vibrance up, notice that in her dress, her dress is in the highlights. I'm adding more saturation to her dress. And if I bring the vibrance down, I'm not bringing the entire saturation down of the image. I'm just bringing the saturation down and the highlights and shadows, which are usually the areas with less saturation. Again, I'm just going to increase vibrance and reduce vibrance. Let's reset. Then we have two color wheels, one for highlights and one for shadows. So I can simply just bring the highlights more towards yellow and shadows towards blue, for example. And this will change the balance between highlights and shadows. So this controller here will change what Premiere sees as shadows or highlights. So if I just bring it to the right, now Premiere sees most of the image as shadows. So this controller here will control a lot of the image shadows and midtones, and the one on the right will control just the extreme highlights. And if I bring it the other way around, now this controller to the right will uh, control most of the image, and the one on the left will control just a small part of shadow. So let's reset. Then we have curves. We have two different types of curves here. We have our standard RGB curves. Basically, this is the overall control for all the curves. Then we have the red, green, and blue curves. So if I simply just come to the blue curve and just bring the highlights down and shadows up, it's just the normal RGB curves. The interesting thing is that now we have a hue saturation curve. What this does basically is that it allows us to control the saturation of certain colors in the image. So instead of controlling the saturation of the entire image or the highlights or shadows, we can simply control saturation of the green parts only. If you come to the controller here, you'll notice that it's a circle. And this white line here is what we control to change the saturation. So if I bring the white, you know, controller closer to the middle of the point, I'm reducing saturation in the entire image. And if I pull it out, I'm increasing the saturation in the entire image. Now I can add more points. And now I can add another point here. So if I bring this point down, notice that I'm bringing it down while the other two points retains their position. So simply I can bring the entire saturation of all the colors now. So now I just desaturated red and I can increase the saturation of the green and yellow parts. So now I just increased the saturation of the grass while reducing the saturation in the rest of the image. And I can actually control even certain parts of the grass. So for example, if I add the controller here, and I bring this down, notice now that some parts of the grass are green, while others are completely desaturated, because they were actually yellow, not green. So if I come to this image here, I can simply control the saturation of the blue parts by adding two points here, and just increasing the saturation of the blue while maintaining the saturation of the rest of the image. Or I can simply bring the saturation of the uh, red down, for example, affecting her skin tones. Or I can increase the saturation of her skin tones while bringing the saturation of the sky down. Then we have these controllers here. Uh, they're basically presets for certain colors. So if I click on the green one, now I have three points created. The point in the middle will uh, control the green color, while the other two points will work as placeholders, preventing me from affecting the rest of the colors in the image. So let me reset. Now I'll choose blue and affect only blue without affecting the rest of the image. Then you have the color wheels controls. These are very simplified controls than the original controls we had in Premiere. We have, of course, shadows, midtones, and highlights, and we can control the hue and lightness of certain parts of the image. So I can, for example, bring the lightness down in highlights, and I can control the hue of the highlights. I'm very happy that Adobe was able to put these very simple controls, very simple color wheels here. Usually this is not their style in Premiere. And finally, we have the vignette controls. To understand vignette and how it works now, I'm going to come to the feather control and just bring it down all the way. And now we have this very clear line. This is our vignette. First, you have the amount, which is basically how dark our vignette is. Then we have the midpoint control. This will control the size of our vignette. Then you have roundness, which will control how round the vignette is. And finally, we have feather. So we're just feathering our vignette. The new Lumetri color panel inside Premiere is, um, is a very radical change from what we're used to inside Premiere. I just feel that one thing is missing, which is the um, hue versus uh, hue controls, where basically you uh, control the hue of certain uh, colors in the image based on their hue. So for example, you choose the red color. So everything red in the image and you change the hue 
of the red parts of the image. I think that's one of the most important uh, reasons why people keep on using Resolve. Um, hue versus hue is just unbelievably important, and for some reason it was never added to Premiere Pro. Uh, however, this is extremely impressive. 